Hi everybody, welcome to the Week in Indies, our show where we neatly package the best bits of indie game news from the past seven days, with it also being a tidy place for us to run down the games we most enjoyed over the week just gone, while also looking ahead to those coming out this week we're most excited about. If you like the format or have any comments or suggestions for the show, feel free to let us know down below and while you're here, be sure to click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you've yet to do so. Let's begin with the news. First up, those of us waiting to get our hands on the super niche and ever so hipster device that is the Playdate may or may not be celebrating with the handheld console having gone up for pre-order towards the end of last week. Depending on how you look at things, the pre-order was either a huge success with the first 20,000 devices allocated to punters within the first 20 minutes, to put that into perspective, that's over 16 devices a second, which is really quite the thing. For anyone who doesn't know, the Playdate is a handheld device which comes in a Vespa yellow with a high resolution and high contrast black and white screen with an old school, totally retro finger crank on the right hand side. At the moment, we're expecting games for the device to be released in seasons, with the first offering 24 titles with two games coming out each week across the first 12 weeks all of which are included within the device costs, which comes in at 179 US dollars plus tax plus shipping. However, and from a personal perspective, in looking to secure a unit here in Europe, things didn't quite go as smoothly as perhaps had been planned. While the folks at Playdate confirmed in a tweet they had warned their international shipping provider of the back-end website Wizardry to expect a heavy load once pre-orders went live, despite having done so, the system seemingly couldn't cope which led to some people being booted from the ordering queue or, as in our experience, a checkout process that just didn't complete. Customers who missed out on the first run are being asked to wait for a follow-up shipping date which is listed as being sometime in 2022. With the demand for the play date being so high, there might be a further initial drop of hardware out into 2023, which is, well, it's quite incredible there's this kind of pent-up demand for this kind of device. Next up, and another highlight from last week, the usually ever-reliable publisher Annapurna Interactive, who previously delivered such wonderful games such as The Pathless, What Remains of Edith Finch, Outer Wilds and Telling Lies, hosted their first dedicated showcase. Highlights for us included The Artful Escape, which comes out September 9th for PC and Xbox, with it also available on Game Pass. Looking to deliver a story-driven experience, this colourful and music-driven game comes with appearances from actors found within Game of Thrones, Kingsman The Secret Service, Arrested Development and Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Collectively, we're torn on this one. It might be quite wonderful, or, well, either way, we don't have too long to find out. Coming out a month later on October 26th, Solar Ash comes from the same team that brought us Hyper Light Drifter. Solar Ash is something that's been public for quite a while now, although we're still not too sure what this type of game is, well, what it's really all about. There's clearly parkour elements, although that being said, creative director Alex Preston spoke with Kotaku over the course of last week and mentioned that while the game is a challenge and will ask a lot of the player, it won't be as brutal as Hyper Light, with the team developing something that's more accessible and more spectacle rather than challenge-based. While there's no word on a release date, another one that we like the look of, Storyteller, well, it looks to be rather interesting. Players will be able to piece together a story by moving characters, plot points, locations, and other elements around a panel by using what seems an intuitive drag-and-drop mechanic. Now, this does look super cool as does the new and highly polished gameplay trailer for Stray, a game set within a cyberpunk city in which you play as a cat. This is the first game to come from the French-based Blue 12 Studios, with Stray expected onto PC, the PlayStation 4, and PlayStation 5 around the springtime of next year. A few other game reveals of note from the show, Neon White comes from the chap who gave us Donut County, although this new title looks to be quite different, with it being a first-person shooter about, and I quote, exterminating demons in heaven. This is expected out later this year on PC and the Switch. And finally, The Outer Wilds is getting an expansion. Echoes of the Eye is due out September 28th, and to be honest, the reveal trailer gives away little about what we can expect with this new content. So if you have any ideas on where all this might be headed, 
feel free to jot down your thoughts in the comments section down below. We're always interested in what you think of the content here on the channel, and what with this a new kind of show, we're keen to see what you think of the format, and in particular the indie news section of all of this. Do you like it? Do you want to see more? Do let us know. Moving again swiftly on, so what games did we play over the past week? Well, to be honest, much of the early part of this was spent chasing the final Umbrella achievement within Death's Door. This sees you only using the Umbrella as your melee weapon, and yep, so far, I'm stuck on the final end boss, which has a tricky middle section that so far is proving, well, I just can't beat the damn thing. He's hoping I can come back to you next week with an update, although again, to be honest, I think this thing has me beat. As for other games we played, well, I played a lot of Grime, which came out August 2nd, via PC and with it headed to Steam and Epic. It can be enjoyed at least for now also if you have access to the Google Stadia service. Now, this is pretty darn good, although like the game that follows, it does get off to a slowish start. I wanted action right from the get-go, and having recently been very much spoiled with this via Death's Door, which throws a boss fight at you within the first couple minutes of the game, Grime's early section is almost glacial by comparison. That said, when Grime gets going, it really gets going, although there is a noticeable difficulty spike around the middle point of the adventure, and as for the final boss, well that so-and-so made the final boss in Death's Door look relatively subdued. While the platforming and Metroidvania aspects of Grime are all well and good, I played and recommend this for these boss battles. They are, in places, well, they're incredible with you really needing to get down into the nitty gritty of how each of them sets about taking you down. There were moments of frustration in some of these battles, the one or two post-death comeback bits where I relaxed only to get killed as this took me down with a strike from beyond was, well I may have uttered a few cross words here and there, although on balance these battles really are great fun. The progression systems and variety of weaponry also feels nicely judged. As for the story running through it, well, I could take or leave it, and yet as a whole, Grime is really rather impressive. We played Grime on PC with the settings all maxed out with the code having been supplied by the publisher for review purposes. Next up, and on paper, I should love The Ascent, with it giving vibes of a Diablo action RPG all within a twin-stick shooter. Played on my, albeit pretty high-end PC, and at 4K with a solid 60 frames per second, it looks magnificent. The same is true across my Xbox Series X and S, with both of these consoles handling the busy on-screen antics with seemingly little or no issues at all. The developers have nailed that cyberpunk aesthetic. Everything looks, while all garish and bright, it has a fine sense of the nitty, gritty and worn feel these places should have, while all sparkly, look a little under the surface and everything feels jaded and tired. Sadly, that's also true of the initial part of the game. It took an age to get going and felt initially super slow. Things do pick up after the first few hours, and pick up, I mean things start to get enjoyable. The twin stick shooting is pretty good, although it doesn't add anything we haven't seen in these kind of games before. Again, the combat loop feels... Well, it feels fine, I guess, if a little repetitive, although by the end, things are just out and out grindy, with vast areas being difficult to navigate. And as the 16 or so hours ticked over, with the end credits rolling, this had me thinking it's not something I'll be looking to play again, at least within the single player mode. There might be some fun to be had with the online or local co-op modes, although I doubt actually I'll go online. However, I will post my thoughts on this side of the ascent over on Twitter via the at GetIndieGame handle over the next few days, so to be sure to follow us over there if you're not already. Next up, a super short game I played over the course of an afternoon and utterly loved it. Omno is available on PC, Switch, PlayStation 4 and the Xbox platforms, with me picking this up via the Xbox Game Pass service, and I played this on PC. If I'm really honest with you, if you have a Game Pass subscription, getting hold of this is simply put, an out and out no-brainer. Omno is really a game about discovery, where everything is just so delightfully and gorgeously signposted, and while the game doesn't hold your hand, Everything feels designed in such a way that makes your movement through the various sections and biomes feel so instinctive. 
Not once was I left thinking, now what do I have to do now? Everything easily flows from a puzzle and gameplay perspective, as you think it just might. Sure, it's short, this is a single sitting game, or perhaps one to play over the course of a few evenings. There are a few issues here and there, with the platforming. Some sections require that little bit too much in the way of going back to cover ground already trodden, and its liberal use of ideas and things you've seen in other games is, well, not really needed. Although as a combat-free little distraction, Omno is an enjoyable piece of escapism. So what are we most looking forward to coming out this week? Well, actually out towards the end of last month on PC. As a group, we have still yet to pick up and play No Longer Home. From what we've seen of this on a few review sites and from comments on Twitter, this should by all rights be something we should really enjoy. It's a narrative point and click adventure telling the story of two London-based flatmates who are forced to move out with one of the characters needing to leave the UK as their visa has expired. It promises a tale about the process of moving on, separation and the anxieties and opportunities all this affords. Following on from its recent publicly available demo, Death Trash is coming out this week in early access, with it supposedly coming with around 5 or so hours of gameplay. This isometric pixel art RPG looks really interesting, with the finished product expected to come with more than 20 hours of activities. All of this has been in development for well over five years, and we featured it a few times over the past couple of years. Everything here looks deliciously macabre, and while I suspect I'll play most of this early access version of the game within the single player, I will be looking forward to seeing how couch co-op mode works in what's supposed to be an easy pop-in and out style of gameplay. This is expected to be an early access for around a year or so, and if this new version is anything like the recent demo, it should be a real joy. Up next in the final game we're looking to play while away from the office comes out August 5th on the Switch. A Monsters Expedition comes to the platform with it already out late last year on PC and via Apple Arcade. The port comes with more than 100 new levels, which will also be pushed to the other platforms as a free DLC. We missed this when it first came out, and the relaxing nature of this open world puzzle adventure should perfectly suit this holiday week ahead and act as something of a come down, so to speak, from the fast paced action that is Death Trash. So that's it, that was the week in indie gaming. Let us know what you think of this new show format down below, and if you liked it, give that like button a gentle caress, and if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing with all the notifications turned on. Either way, many thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again here soon for more indie game videos.